different river. The other day, to be honest, was a complete disaster because uh, we were self-distancing. We found a place that there shouldn't have been any people, and there weren't. Uh, there weren't any fish either. Now, we found another spot here today that's just me and Brian behind the camera. Film crew of one again. Uh, so we're doing our best to uh, stick to the rules. Now, I'm going to fish exactly the same as I did the other day. I said I would, and I'm going to do. Uh, if I was going to fish for my life today, I wouldn't. I'd be putting a waggler down this because it's going through at a nice easy pace. It's very low and it's very clear. Uh, we've not seen a fish top, but I'm quite optimistic. And what I've done, I've, uh, the bait I'd made up the other day, I, I just shoved it straight in the fridge. Um, so what I've got there is what I was using the other day when we caught no fish. And uh, I've reconstituted the ground bait. What I've done with the ground bait is I've shoved it through the sieve. These are handy. Everybody should carry one of these because in the summer when your ground bait, when the consistency changes, you can just bring it back again with your little spray. So I've plumbed up. Uh, I've got about today, probably about just under eight foot. Uh, I've gone an 010 bottom, I've gone my B957 Colmic, we're going to put two red maggots on uh, and we're going to do our best to see what we can catch. What I'm going to do, although I've, made, I've got the ground bait there, I'm just going to just going to test it, see how we go with uh, a few loose-fed reds, and I'm going to go down the middle first. We've got a slight disadvantage because we've got a downstream wind, but it'll be oh look, look at that. Fluke. Fluked it. Pair of eyes. At least it's a start, isn't it? My main line is a Maver floater. Uh, Brilliant line for running a stick float or a bolo down. Uh, it stands some stick as well. Um, as I said, the problem is we've got this downstreamer, so what I might have to do, if it gets any worse, I might just have to put a back shot on it. And, uh, and um, there's a fish. But we'll talk about that if I have to. Little roach. At least we're off and running. better fish nice fish
hybrid. Sometimes these 957s are a micro barb, but sometimes the barb protrudes out a little bit too far and it makes it awkward for getting the hooky out. Now, what I quite often do when that happens, I'll just flatten the barb down a little bit more and it stops that happening. So we'll see what happens next fish. It's going down there, lovely that is. I'd charm my granny out of a rocking chair, that would. I'm going to stop that, just ease it back and then drop it. There's fish there, I think it might be a case of just grouping them up with some bait now. Bit of ground baiting. I drop a few maggots in it and just stir it up. Squeeze it together. Perfect. I don't mind it breaking up on the way down today. I'll put this one a little bit higher upstream and a bit closer in. That's a better fish too. Another hybrid. They fool you a little bit because they fight like hell. The bit of current that's on it. I'm just gonna knock that. barb down a little bit. Easy way is just to flatten it, put on the flat spot on you. Disgorge you. Hold it back a little bit and then let it go. It's just dragging the deck in places. I want it down. I want to keep the fish down if I can. Keep, if I can. Uh, I don't want them floating around up in the air. And I'm not convinced, to be honest with you, at this stage, that it's busting with fish. There's fish there, and we want to catch some. But I'm not convinced that it's uh, it's stuffed at the set at this point in time. This time of the year, it can either be a feast or a famine. If you drop on them where the shoulder was born, and you can empty it. But then you get a lot of other areas where pff, there aren't many fish at all. But uh, I think we'll, we'll catch some here today.
They're not bad fish. That's a nice roach. If I match fishing, I'll be netting that. Your favourite fish? Won a lot of money with them. Hold it back a little. And I'll let it go. There's one or two having it. I would normally fish three lines on this. I'd fish down the middle, down the down the down the inside, and across. But because it's so clear, I think the fish will probably be drifting away from us further across. Nice little fish then. Take Brian's head off. Forty odd yards downstream now. That <laughs> it's uh, it tells me a lot. It tells me that although, as I've just said earlier on, there's fish here. It's not busting. We're at that time of the year when you get in that transitional period between winter and summer and the fish are deciding that they want to do something else other than take my ground bait and maggots. Uh, I dare say, if I came here in another four weeks time, it would be full. But it's enjoyable. Just catching the deck. Before I started fishing, I spent a good five minutes plumbing up. And the, the, the thing is with a plumb, it tells you a lot of things about your swim. Don't just chuck it in and leave it in one place. Work it through the swim. You'll feel 
the divots and the, the bumps and if there's any snags. The, the, the plummet is a, a massive part of your gear. Uh, as from the point of view of giving you an advantage. I, I, I take guys fishing and I'll say, plumb up, they haven't even got a plummet. <laughs> you've got to know where your baseline is, you've got to know where you're starting from. And they, they, they just don't, haven't got a plummet with them at all, it's crazy. I like it when it's like this, I, you've got to make them have it. If it was easy every time you went, you wouldn't go, would you really? Well, I wouldn't. I can't speak for people that live on carp puddles, but I'm not even going to go there. Just that little rise there, and it just catches it occasionally. Oh, naughty little fish. I'm having to go about phew, above three quarters of the way across. Uh, I've tried pulling them shorter with a bait and they're not having it. Uh, so needs as much we're having to fish across today. A lot easier if you can get them off the rod end. When you're fishing a running line, a stick or a bolo, You've got to remember that when you put it in, it's got to be between 12 o'clock and one o'clock. If you're putting it in past the end of the rod, one o'clock, by the time it settles, you've got, you've got your float and the bait going out of control slightly. So if, if you put it in slightly downstream, tighten up to it, you're in control straight away. Some mates arrived.
It's steady. Hard going, but steady. Having to work from today. And what have I got? I've got a pair of eyes. Lovely little perch. I once won a section once on a canal with one of them and it weighed four drams. Can you imagine how good it was? Right it now. Got plenty coming now. I must be brilliant, me. Wanna chuck. Wanna chuck. And they weren't here when we come. Well, it's almost time to go. <laughs> Fished about three hours. Started off slow. Getting one a chuck now. Um, had to be worked out. Um, he wanted the loose feed. The ground bait were knocking them back. Another day, different circumstances. It's a matter of working out what they want how they want it and today they wanted loose feed every every second cast if I put loose feed in every second cast I got a fish sometimes every cast or every every two casts they got a lot of fish um, but uh, some nice hands full a couple of just netters a lot of small fish but when we got here there were very few fish uh, and we pulled them in Using this method, we've pulled them in and, and we've got a decent bag of fish. And, and very shortly, what I'll be doing is pulling the keep net out and putting the fish back and uh, we'll be back another day. Enjoyed it though. It'll do an odd day. <laughs> 